an honorable um, Matthew to give us a word of program and um, prayer. Honorable Matthew, please, if you're available, kindly do us the honest. Honorable Matthew. Okay, I think he's not around. Um, before I call on someone else, I would like to welcome um, Honorable Franklin Kumasa, the former president of Nux Chendu. Honorable, please, you're welcome. Okay, he didn't hear me. Okay, so you're welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, okay, okay. How is Ghana do? I hope Ghana is fine. Uh, Ghana is fine, except that uh, we are being faced with Galamse menace, we, but we, we are managing. We, we trust. We trust you push it for us. We trust you push it for us. And we are doing all that we could to help the system. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So without much ado, I would like to call on. Um, I call on. Okay, Honorable Juliana, are you here? Juliana Mantibia, Honorable Secretary, please, are you here? Okay, if she's not here, okay, let's have a word of prayer. Our dear Lord and Master Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for this amazing um, program that we are about having. We thank you for our speaker because he, we believe that he is well seasoned and he's well versed in this knowledge. We pray that Lord God, even as he imparts this knowledge on us, may we be good receptors of the knowledge that he's about um, imparting on us. This we pray in Jesus name, I, amen. So next I would, like to call on, I would like to call on Honorable Victor to give us um, the welcome address. Honorable Victor Agbesi, please, if you are here, kindly give us the welcome address. Hello, Honorable Victor, are you with us? Uh, you are muted, but we can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Please, you have the floor. Give us the opening address there. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, um, my members. Good evening, honorable members. Good afternoon, honorable members. And wherever you are, you've joined this meeting. We are grateful. I would like to say a very big thank you for joining this evening's meeting. Yet another strong and detailed uh, seminar which we all know that is a scientific one, of course. This seminar is designed to give us more insight in, in order to do our research more deeper than we, we thought or than we've been doing. I hope that we will learn very, very well and uh, we will pick these things very, very well. I want to inform members that this is going to be more of practical. So get your machine, get your internet working, get everything set, and then we roll the meeting. So without much ado, I'd like to welcome our guest speaker in the person of uh, Dr. Benjamin Kluga Brown to take over from here. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Doc, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, thank you all for um, joining us once again um, to discuss how uh, our scientific um, journey is supposed to be done. Most of the things that I'm going to talk about, uh, most of you know about it, but it's just a reminder and uh, the major part of this presentation is going to be practical. So um, if you remember our first meeting, it's going to be like that, but uh, this time around is going to be uh, more detailed. And so I hope that by the end of this program, um, we are all going to um, have this knowledge and uh, perhaps apply it in, in, in our various research fields. So <clears throat> I'm going to uh, share my PPT. 
So, so it's going to be first um, PPT, and then we, we are going to um, alternate between the PPT and then the uh, the websites that we will be using. So, um, just pay attention. Thank you. Okay, so let's go to my PPT. Mm. Yeah, so as the topic goes, scientific literature review and then search. So we have already um, discussed the reasons why we should do literature research or re literature review. But this time around, we want to approach it in a scientific manner because not all of us um, um, follow the rules of uh, scientific um, literature search and also the reviews that um, um, we are supposed to bring together to form our hypothesis or to have our claims. Most of us don't follow the scientific uh, way. And so at the end of the day, we uh, we produce we, we, we produce certain things or we come up with claims which are not entirely true. So um, this is the content of uh, the, the presentation today. So we are going to look at the general understanding of what scientific uh, literature review is. Then the second part, we are going to jump straight into um, how to do the search. Yes. and. Um, we, we will use two, uh, three databases, um, Web of Science, PubMed, and Scopus. And then perhaps if time allows us, we are going to also do some small programming with R uh, because um, uh, I know some, some members are programming by us and they would want to know how to do these um, searches on, on, on their various uh, programming language. Uh, the popular programming language that I think it will be easy for us to do is R. So that's why I'm going to introduce it. And maybe in future, we can focus our seminar on just R. Okay, so let's go. Are you all ready? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah we are okay. ready. All right. So first of all, let's look at the reason why I think that um, systematic or um, scientific approach to literature review is important. These days, there are many social media scientists. Uh, people go online, they read something and they think they know it all. So based on what they read, they come out and then they, they, they state some claims without um, any proof. So in the end, we have several things online that aren't true or that does not um, you know, show the scientific rigorosity um, in, in, in their claim. So um, you can, one uh, very good example is um, this COVID-19. So if you have a, um, an issue about COVID-19 and you go online, you read this uh, information online and then you come up with your own idea and say, oh, we know that COVID-19 is this, this, and that. Without showing a proof, without showing uh, over the years what has been done and what particular thing is pertaining to COVID-19 or the virus itself, then you will you are likely to throw dust in the eyes of those who are reading. So that is the reason why, um, basically, that is the reason why searching is important. Before you say something, you have to be sure that what you are saying is true. So you can see this, um, this graph here. It says that the large majority of public uh, COVID-19 Facebook posts in March 2020 is linked to news outlets, not healthcare or science sites. So you can imagine, look at this, news organization is about 74%. And then healthcare and science site is 1%. So it means that most of us, we, 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 have, uh, we get our information from non-scientific or non-proven sites. So 
people also go online, they read certain things, and then they think they can apply the same thing in their research. So they, they focus their attention on what they read online, they pursue it, and then they get to a middle where uh, maybe they have um, third year or something, and they realize that, oh, what they are chasing is not even um, worth chasing. Because all, all these things happen because we didn't do our right, um, we didn't approach the research in the right way. So the next one is going to shock you. This is um, um, a, a publication in 2020. It says that um, a scientific review on links between air pollution and COVID-19. So if you look at the graph A, it says percentage of papers, and then the X axis is the various gases that um, they think is associated with COVID-19. So doing these kinds of research gives us a, um, a clear understanding of what the COVID-19 is or what the research is talking about. So it is very, it is imperative that we do a review of what has happened or we do a review of what is going on and then we can have a conclusion or we can come up with an idea or maybe close a certain gap. So that is the reason why we should focus our attention on scientific literature review and not just a literature review. Now, you can see this graph also. This is coronavirus cascade. Now, if you look at the, uh, the y-axis, it's a cumulative number of publication in thousands. And then if you look at the x-axis, the x-axis tells you how the um, how far the research has gone. So in just 2020, look at PubMed publication, PubMed publication, and then look at um, preprints that have been published online. So these forms a plethora of, of knowledge that people can dive into or people can look into and then come up with consistent consistent ideas on how to solve coronavirus. And indeed, in our various field. For instance, those in computer science, these days we have AI things going on. People have written a lot of papers with, uh, on, on AI. And so if you want to do a research in AI, it is best that you begin with literature review so that you know what is going on and not to speculate too much. Now, we all know this is the procedure for scientific approach. So scientific uh, approach is not just a blunt speculation. Before you say something, you might have gone through a rigorous, you know, step-by-step -step way. You might have searched previous researches. You might have come up with your hypothesis based on those previous um, 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 ex uh, experience and then do the analysis and come up with a report. And then so that when somebody is reading, the person can follow the trend and, and, and say, maybe you have, you, have, you have closed a gap or you have pointed out certain scientific errors that has gone on over the years. So this is just the, as you know, this is the scientific way of coming up with, uh, with, with, with an idea. So the question is that, what uh, can we say about a scientific literature review? So it says that it's a critical account of what has been published on a topic by accredited publisher, so a uh, researcher. So a critical account, a critical account. So that means that you have done your homework well. That means that you know what is trending. That, that means that you know the, the information that has gone on or that is being produced in that particular field, okay? And then when I say accredited researcher, that means that it's not anybody who is on Facebook or who is on Twitter or something who says something that seems so nice. It's not that person that we should consider, but we, are, we should consider somebody who is in the research field or who is in the field or is in in an organization, recognized organization. That means that that person has credibility. So these days people say so many things online, 
you know, speculates a lot of speculation. Such people shouldn't be taken seriously because they didn't use, they didn't go through um, the scientific rigorous uh, way of, of, of coming up with a claim. Now, the, uh, another reason why we should do a scientific literature review or a literary review is that it helps you to digest the current knowledge. And also, like I've said before, find out patterns and then uh, in the long run, maybe close the gap between the researches that have been done within the researches that have been done over the years. This is very important, okay? Current knowledge give, gives you more in, uh, in depth or depth and then find out your uh, find out if you can identify patterns or in, in in that research, and then finally maybe close a certain gap or point out um, a certain um, um, error that has been published. And so this um, approach is just like this. So for, for for the first time, you would think that it is it should provide the uh, interpretation of what has been done over the years. Then the next thing that you should do is uh, that that is uh, included in in the benefits of doing scientific literary review is also to help you to find out. So over the years, what has been done and has those things given any impact to maybe the consumers or uh, has those researches or publication impacted the the world positively or negatively or is it having an impact at all so when you do literature review this is what happens and also it also brings you closer to various thoughts so when you we find it um, somehow when you begin your research you think you know everything but along the line you realize that many people have done several things that you are doing today and so it gives you an open-minded okay, way. You read various points or various sides of your research. And then this gives you um, a very um, comprehensive idea in the field. So you, you wouldn't just say, I know this is what it is, but you also say that over the years, this is what this is what people are saying, or these are the things that people are saying, and therefore I believe if I do it this day, this way, and that way, it is going to be okay. The next thing also is that um, it helps. Um, the, the next thing also is that, it, as we have said, it can gives you uh, an, um, a chance to um, to close the gap in the in 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 the publications or the scientific thoughts that have been um, put across over the years. And um, last but not the least, it also gives you a clear, um, a very you know, specific idea in the field. For instance, I'm in neuroimaging, brain imaging, and there are a lot of fields in, there are lots of approaches in this field, but if I'm doing something like um, addiction, then it will give me it will give me a, a specific knowledge in <clears throat> addiction research in the in the field of neuroimaging. So I will know what is going on, but just not speculation. Then finally, it gives you an idea of whether the the direction or what has been done or what people are talking about is relevant to current situations or to the current problems that you are facing. So that is the reason why professors will ask you to write a proposal, uh, identify a problem and then bring out the um, um, solutions. So that means if you, if you identify a problem, the problem should be a relevant problem. And that problem should come from a, set, a certain um, history. There should be a history behind the the problem so it is not that you just think that there should be for instance there should be 7g so if you say there should be 7g why why should there be 7g we have currently 5g and we are getting closer to 6g so why should you go to the next generation is the current um, 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 architecture not working 
is the has there been some error or is there still a, a gap between you know um countries for instance in in some places over in in, in the world where they are still using uh 3g or 4g so if we jump to 7g will there be this you know this gap between these areas is there any importance to the uh the research that uh, the, the problem or the proposed solution so it is very important that you follow these steps and then find out if your conclusion of the solutions that you are bringing is valid or the claims that you are putting up across is valid so that is very important with all these six steps this is the most important thing that you can get from when you are doing um, your literature search or your literature review now so in the end what literature review gives you is that it helps you in knowing how to communicate your scientific uh, knowledge so you don't just talk by you know uh, you, don't, you don't just speculate but you argue on uh, you argue logically based on uh, certain scientific facts and also that if you submit a paper or if you um, put something across people will believe you and then people will uh, follow what you are doing based on the <clears throat> reviews that you have done um, you will know that before you submit or uh, you, you publish a paper there is a, a, a portion like introduction the introductory part is a kind of uh, uh, literature review why do we do that we do that so that when someone is reading your paper the person can follow through what has been done or what are people saying and are you having any alternative uh, claim uh, compared um, relative to what others have said so this is very important in communicating your scientific ideas now after you have done all that you, you need to write it because if you read tons and tons of papers or you have done your review extensively and you keep it, then you are not helping. So when you do your research, it's important to write your research and publish it. Recently, um, a lot of people have been, you know, um, speculating on the importance of writing, writing um, uh, an academic uh, paper. So people, there are people who are saying, no, it's not important for you to write an academic paper. You just do your experiments, get results, and then you go away. But that is not the case, because if you tell me you have done something, you have created something, without people reading exactly what you have done, without people finding out if they could re replicate what you have done, then you have not done anything. You have not done research. So. Um, over your scientific life, over your research life, you would be required to uh, publish one or two papers, possibly in a high journal paper uh, um, uh, site, because then it will help people to read what you have done. It will help people to understand what you have done and perhaps maybe replicate what you, are done, you have done. So it's not just a, an experiment you do and then you say you have done it and then people take your words for it. People have to rigorously you know, investigate or scrutinize what you have done and see if it is valid. So this man who received this uh, Nobel uh, 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 Prize Award last two years or so said that it is important that we write our, uh, our thoughts or the things that we have done. It's important to put it in writing and then and then that people can know that you have done a research. Okay, so <clears throat> why is it that we should write? So writing actually um, improves your topic knowledge. So when you are writing, it helps you to, you know, in your mind, it helps you to organize your thoughts, you know, in, in a very nice way. So that, for instance, when you go for conferences or you are putting your claims online, it will be logical enough for people to follow. The next thing is that it provides new insight in your topic. So if you do a literature review and then you write it, whilst you are writing it, it's, it gives you, what, if you agree with me that whenever you're writing a paper, at, at a point, new ideas start dropping because 
you are you are employing certain your 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 mind your brain in a way that whilst you are right, stimulating your ideas it's stimulating things that you might have not seen online or heard people say but when you are when you are writing it stimulates those senses and helps you to come up with new insights when uh, when you are writing now the next thing is that it demonstrates your critical analysis skills so yes so you, you said you have done some research. And so um, tell us how you've analyzed all this research that you've, you've, you've gone through or all the literature that you've gone through. What can you say about it? What can you say about it? So that shows if you put your claim online or you put your claim uh, over, over the internet or people to read or in the scientific literature, people will, find out how critical you are, how analytic you are. So you've said that you've, you've combined hundreds of uh, information and then you've come up with a conclusion based on the things that you've read. So people will know that you have critically analyzed or scrutinized what has been done over the years and what is trending in your field. Then the final one is that yes, it shows your communication skills. Recently, people do come to um, me for discussion and some people say that, oh, you know, I have this idea, but I find it difficult to put it across. I find it difficult to write it. Yes. So if you don't, if you do your, your search or you do your, um, your, your literature uh, searching and reviewing without putting, you know, writing it down, it will only stay in your mind but translating what is in your mind on the paper or in your pad, that gives, that tells you, you know, it improves your skills of communicating scientifically to others. If you don't have the chance, like uh, people who go for, uh, for conferences, if you don't have chance to meet other scientists and all other researchers to talk about things, it's, it is also a chance for you, you know, to put your voice in, in writing. So at the end of the day, um, by the time you complete your, 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 uh, your school, maybe PhD or your master's, you might have um, had enough knowledge on how to communicate to other researchers, but just not um, um, uh, in the form of speculation. People have the ideas, but they cannot, they cannot say it. If you cannot say it, there is a chance for you to write it. If you cannot write it, then we will assume that you've not done research. So this is very critical in your scientific life. Now, so let's come to this part. What is not a scientific literature review? So a scientific literature review is not an essay. Okay, so you don't write a scientific review as you are writing English. Even those who are doing literature, those who are doing literature, when they are writing their prose and all those things, they write it scientifically. Scientific just means that you should be conversant with the terms or with the scientific procedures. Hello, Doc. Please, can you hear me? Because I, I think I can't hear you. I don't know about others, though. Hello? Yeah, we can't hear. Oh, okay, I think he's, he's gone off. Um, Doc, maybe you may have to log out and log in again if you're having some challenges. Okay, you're back. Can you hear me, Doc? Hello.
um, this is so we are talking about um, what a scientific review is not. So a, a scientific review is not an English essay. So you should be conversant with the scientific um, procedures in writing um, um, your literature review. And it's not also um, a summary of the various works that you've read. So people fall into, into this trouble. They write their uh, scientific review as though they are telling us each of the things that they've read in each of the papers. That is not a scientific review. A scientific review it should, it should, it should contain, it should be um, an accumulation of what you've read and the, an, the analysis that you've done on those things you've read and what you, um, based on the scientific approach, have found out. Okay, so it is not a summary of the various papers you've read. So you read some somebody's uh, literature review and it's, it's like, oh, paper A said this, paper B said that, paper C said this. That is not a, scient a scientific literature review. It's, it might be maybe a report or maybe um, a summary of a paper, but it's not a scientific literature review. So be careful with that. The next one is that it's not based on your personal opinions or bias towards your opinion. So that's what I said in the beginning, that most people find certain material online, and they develop their own ideas, and then they claim they have some ideas, and then they put it across. That is not a scientific review. It means that you are speculating. You are thinking, of, you, you, are, you are telling people what you think. It's like you are saying that there, there exists a ghost, but you can't prove to us that you've seen a ghost. Yeah, so it should, it should go through um, uh, hypothesis, hypothesis testing and all that. It should go through all those things and then we, we will, uh, um, now it can qualify to be a scientific review. The final part is that it is not the chronological history. So, you will find out that others also write their review as though they, it's, it's a kind of a history. So in 1990, this, somebody did this, but in 2005, somebody did this. And, this, and so I think this, no, 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 no. You don't have to put it that way. It's, if you do it this way, you are just, I can also go online to, to those papers and then read it. So it is not, this is not what we are expecting you to do. We expect you to come up, after you've read all those papers, we'll come up with an analytical uh, uh, um, um, results. You should come up with some form of data or come up with some form of scientific um, conclusion, not just the dates and then the years that it's been done and all of that. And I think that for these four points, most of us uh, have been doing that. So I guess that today we also know that it is not uh, the way to do um, scientific literature review. It is not an essay. It's not a summary of individual papers you've read. It is not your personal opinion, okay? And then it's not a history work. It's not a history work, okay? So at this point, at this point, um, we, we know that to do a scientific um, <clears throat> work, these are the things you should do. On the picture on the left is telling us that you should develop a topic. And uh, after you develop the topic, you work through the knowledge. So the knowledge will come from when you are doing the search, you do a search and then you have a preliminary idea about what is there. And then that will inform your question. Okay, so if you've read enough, if you've read enough, you've done critical work enough, it will give you the questions to ask, it will give you the questions to ask you. Most of the, most PhD students or master's students jump into their research. They jump into, if you jump into your research, the, the likelihood that you get stuck in the, in the middle is very high because you don't have enough knowledge of what has been done or what is going on. So then you come 
the final thing is that you do evaluation and then give us your um, um, analysis or your, your conclusion of what is in, is in the field. So if you look at the right hand side, it says that select a topic, search the literature, which we, which we are going to do tonight. So you search the literature and develop an argument. So after searching the literature, you know what is there and then you develop the, or the argument. Okay, you develop the argument because you might have spotted some gap or you might have spotted certain errors or you might have spotted some, some, some ideas that will improve the, 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 the work in that field. Then you, you the survey the literature. So here, that means that over the years, what has been done, okay, what has been done, and then find out if there are the trends are smooth or there are the trends are not smooth. Smooth trend means that whether the progress, you can follow the progress of this uh, the, the problem in that in that uh, field. And then you have a, you critique the literature. So that's why I'm saying that you don't have to rush into the critique. The literature means that you have read it. You have asked your question. So each, each time you are writing your literature review, it means you are questioning something. You are questioning something. And then at the end of the day, after questioning, writing and all those things, uh, after questioning, then you come up with your conclusion or your idea, and then you write the review. So this is the cycle. I know there are a lot of um, different variations of the cycle, but this is the basic cycle of writing the literature review. So at this point, I will uh, I will pause and then ask for for because we are going to get into the real. <clears throat> work for today. So I'll pause here and then ask a question. I need four people to ask a question about what we have discussed so far so that we can jump into the practical section. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Doc. Please, um, like Doc said, four people. So please, if you are among the four people that would like to ask a question, kindly raise your hand. And I'll call you, or you can leave your question in the chat box. Doc will see, and he will do justice to it. Um, four people. Uh, I think I'll be the first person of the four people. So, Doc, I have a question. Yes. So, um, in your ending statements, you you did mention that uh, most uh, graduate students, or should I say students, they just jump into their topic. Yes. They just jump into their research. I mean just jump yeah. into their research and they get stuck in the middle. So I also do know that sometimes the problem majorly, most times is defining a topic. So yeah. how how do you arrive? I, I know it's a long one on that, but if mm -hmm. is there any um, simple tidbits that you could like indicators that can help to people, you know, how to arrive at your topic? Because when, once you have it, of course, the others can also follow. Thank you. Yes, um, to arrive at your topic. So you can, you, from all we, what you've said, it is, it is in the process of getting a topic. A literature review, a literature review, the most important part of a literature review is to have the problem or to define the question that you need to ask in your research field. So, you, if you are able to write a literature review or you are able to do a literature review, it will give you an idea of the topic that you can tackle within the years that you, you will spend in your PhD or in your graduate study. So imagine that I do a thorough uh, literature review, then I will spot gaps, I will spot some improvement, I will spot some questions, I will spot certain things that are not really clear. And that would define what question or what topic I should tackle first. So it, literature review, actually what we are, all what we are talking about is, is, is getting the topic. So it, the reason why most students fall into in the trouble is because they didn't do enough literature review. Okay, so the way to go, the way to go, I think 90% of the way to go is to do literature review first before you start 
NA, NA research. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doc. Okay, so three, three more to go. If you have a question, kindly raise your hand or chat in the, type it in the chat box, Doc will see and answer you. Thank you very much, Doc. Um, okay. I'm answered, thank you. Okay. We are waiting. All right, all right. I think maybe uh, okay. we can continue from here if we don't have any question. Okay, Doc. Okay. All right, so um, the next thing that we are going to talk about is the practical section. So I hope everyone uh, is ready. And everyone is ready to... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, uh, Akusia Nanjin, you, you can ask your question. Hello. Hello, Honorable Akosia. Akosia Nanjing, please ask your question. Either you mute yourself or you, you use the chat box. Okay, I think she's. Okay, okay. Available. Yeah, so um, let's go. So, so the next thing here is that we are going to talk about how to do the search on a popular databases. So this is very important and this is where a lot of students get stuck. This is where a lot of students get stuck because uh, you find out that um, your professor asks you to go and to search for some papers or to go and search for topics. And then you come back and say, you know, uh, I didn't get any information on that topic, okay? Uh, it happens to many students just because they don't know how to search. You might think you know how to search, but uh, bet you and I, you don't know how to search. Even on Google, if you are searching on Google, there are certain things that you do to optimize your Google search. But some of us, we just go on Google and type, oh, how can I cook? Or we just go on Google and say, oh, uh, I maybe I'm looking for uh, network or info, information technology in IoT. Then you get two or three papers and you think, oh, maybe that is the end. No, it's because you don't know how to optimize your search. So today, this evening, which we are going to spend most of our time on, please, this is where we'll begin our, our presentation. So pay attention to whatever we'll do here. Okay, so get your computers ready. So first of all, we are going to um, these are the, um, the various uh, platforms that people use to do their search. So we have um, something like PubMed, we have Web of Science, we have Scopus, we have Scholar, and many, 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 about maybe more than 1,000 of them, a 100 of them to do your, your literature search. But I'm going to focus on these three, the um, um, PubMed, Web of Science, and then Scopus. These three are common. The search parameters are common, but there is a, there is a slight variation in the way they do the search. So it is, it is important that we are conversant, we get conversant with the, the way they do the search in each of, the, of these databases. So first of all, we are going to look at how um, um, uh, PubMed does its search. So let's look into PubMed. So PubMed search have several um, operators or things that can help you to do your search. We have what we call operators, wildcard, field tags, and filters. In Boolean, we have uh, and, or, and not. And these uh, Boolean operators are supposed to be capitalized each time you are doing your search. And then we have wildcard. So remember, <clears throat> here we are talking about we are talking about PubMed. So this is PubMed. This is how PubMed looks like. This is the operators and then things that they use. So we have 
wildcard, which is um, this asterisk sign or the star sign. Then we have search field tags. For instance, AU, AU means search by author. So for instance, if you type uh, Klugan Brown and then you put into the bracket AU, it means that you should search for uh, um, articles written by Klugan Brown. And then we have what we call the filters. So we can also, after searching, we can also um, um, filter our search by age or by um, gender or by whatever, by, by, by date or, or others. So this is the basic thing that you should know about uh, operators, wildcard, field tags, and filters in PubMed. Please remember this is for PubMed. Okay. Now, when we look at um, Boolean operators, we have or, not, and and. And when you are searching, you are supposed to make sure, you are supposed to be careful with the order that you are doing the search. And then you should be, you should be, you should note what is called the quotations. So I'm going to <clears throat> go straight to the um, the PubMed website. Okay, so we will begin with or or. So or what does all this? So look at this look at this graph, uh, this picture on the right. So our search term is smoking, drinking, driving. So let's assume that we want to search for articles that are uh, concerned with smoking and then those that are concerned with drinking, then driving. Now, if you look at this one, we are saying that for not, what it tells you that it should, if it is all, okay, all should be, all of smoking, okay, find all articles concerning smoking, find all Hello, dog. Means drinking and all articles that contain driving. So it is smoking or drinking or driving. Okay, so Let's, uh, um, let's... We, can't, we can't see your screen. Oh, I don't know if I'm the only one, but... Uh, yeah, me too. It's like it's still loading. It, it yeah. hasn't uh, completed yet. Okay, somebody... Uh, I, I just hope that it's not uh, China doing so. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, we are talking about or. Okay, so we are saying that we're talking about smoking or drinking or driving. So we want all articles that contain smoking, all articles that contain dri drinking and all articles that contains uh, driving. So um, for instance, let's go to PubMed. Can you see my screen? Yes, please. Okay. So in PubMed, let's look at uh, what all is. So we have, for instance, let's say, we say heart attack, heart attack, or um, injury, okay, or or driving. So, and then let's do the search. So you can see <clears throat> this search brought uh, about, about 2000, is it 2000 or 2 million results, right? So it means, <clears throat> and it's from 1784 to 2021. So now maybe, so when you get, it means that it has taken all, um, all studies from heart attack 
all studies from injury, all studies from driving, okay? So you can see here, sleep driving, you can see an injury, uh, perception, injury patient perception of drinking. You can see a factors affecting injury. So it is bringing all of them together. Okay. Now the next thing you could do here in PubMed is that you can set up some. Uh, you can set up some uh, parameters. So the parameters can be, for instance you want um, only meta-analysis. So when you click on meta-analysis, it will filter out. So you can see now we have 13,000, okay, studies. Now you can go to additional filters. When you click on additional filters, it will give you, for instance, the species that, um, you are looking at. So let's say we click on human, then we go to in which language was the, um, is, are these papers written? Then let's say we want uh, only English articles. Then we look at sex, maybe um, male, okay? And we go to subjects. So here subjects, you can choose um, maybe some, um, analysis that has been done for HIV and other other things. So how did they do it? Maybe a systematic review from a systematic review or not. Then we go to journal. So here you, you are allowed to choose about three journals based on the, the search terms that you used. And then maybe we can look at um, ad these days adolescents. So let's look at maybe uh, young adults, okay, from 19 to 24, and then click on show. So from here, it will, we can click here. So you can see that it has added some, uh, some filters. So you click here, only human. So we still, and then, we look, we, we, so we have still 13,000. And then you can go to only English articles. Okay, so you can see it has reduced. It means that in the, in the search, there were some other um, language um, articles, other uh, language articles there. Then we click on only mail. So you take notes, it has reduced from some uh, 20 something million. Now we have 13,000 results. Then we go to, let's say age, we click on age. So it has filtered everything. So you can see the filter here. We need articles from meta-analysis, articles that are only in, uh, human, articles that are only in English. Then we have articles that concern only young and then uh, young adults. So we have, in the end, we have about 377. So it means that you have done a very comprehensive searching containing heart attack studies, all heart attack studies, all injury studies, and all driving studies. Put them together. So now we have about 377 results. Now, how about if we want to do, uh, so, so here we are saying all this, all that, and all this. So this is the all Boolean operator. Now let's go to NAT. So here we are saying that we are looking for smoking and not what drinking. So you can see the, uh, the, the orange shaded region. We are looking for only this orange shaded region, but not this, not drinking. So you can see here, only those, only the orange shaded region that we are looking for. 
So let's look at how it is done. Let's look at how it is done. So let's go back to our PubMed. So in our PubMed, so let's do uh, another search. Now remember, you have to clear this search before because if you don't clear this search, it will assume that you want to do a search within these results, within these results. So you have to clear it. Okay, now you can see it's back to the original. So now let's say we are, let's, let's do the first one and see something. We are saying drink, uh, so we have drinking or driving. So let's do, let's look at the first one and see what results we'll get. So we have about 564,000. 564,000 containing all drinking uh, studies and all driving studies. Now let's put, let's clear the, the um, let's go back, okay, and do the, the, the search again. So here <clears throat> we have so remember, it's, a, it's about 254,000. Now let's look at this. Drinking, not driving. So it has reduced to 188,000 studies. So that means that it has taken off the driving uh, articles. So any article that contains driving, it has removed it. Now remember, it is searching for here. We are not um, using the the other wildcards and all this. So it is searching both in the top in the in the in the topic and then searching in the the abstract. So in in the next uh, one, we are going to look. We will look at when we just want to search in the in the title or we want to search in the abstract. Okay, let's move on. Now, let's go to and. This is very tricky. In the in the in the or we are saying all drinking and all smoking. Okay? All drinking and all smoking. But in and it is looking at the intersection between drinking and then smoking. So that means studies that have uh, the, the studies of drinking and studies of smoking. But these two studies have something in common. So it's going to extract all those studies that have some uh, driving and smoking in common. But remember, not all, so it will not include all drinking studies it will not include all smoking study, but studies that have this intersection that I've talked about drinking as well as smoking. So let's look at the difference. Let's look at the difference. So here, let's say we are talking about, um, uh, we are talking about drinking and smoking okay drinking and smoking so drinking okay drinking so let's look at the all or smoking okay so we have 4,991,000 uh, 4, 4, uh, results, 491,000 results. So take note of this, we have 491,000 results. Now so let's look at if we put and. So, 
So we have uh, drinking and smoking, uh, smoking, smoking. So it has reduced to 29,000. So do you get the idea now? It means that it has only extracted studies that have this intersection, but not all the studies in smoking and all the studies in drinking. It's only extracted studies that talk about these two things. Okay, it talks about these two things. So you can see the number here has reduced. So if you know how to use and and then all appropriately, you will narrow your risk, you will narrow the search in the way that you want it. Now, let's, so we have talked about, or we have talked about not, and then we have talked about and. Now let's go to, um, let's go to the other wild cards. So look at this wild card. We are saying uh, asterisks. So for instance, if you are searching and you, you, you type something like, psych p s y c h and then you put the wild card star here or asterisk here it's going to it's going to search all the studies that have the variations of psych so here you see psychology psychotherapy psychosomatic psychobiology psychometric blah 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 okay look at this one too die d i a r r h and then you put the star here now this one tells you the variations of words that comes after this word that you have typed. So here we have diarrhea, we have diarrhea. So these two things represent the American spelling and then the British spelling. So it is very important, okay? So some, some researchers will use American spelling in their titles. Some will use um, um, British spelling in their titles. So, when you do it this way to bring you all the variations of the words. So let's, let's look at um, how it, 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 it looks in the, in the search. So we can write something like uh, D I, yeah, we, can, we can write something like, okay, let's say psych. Okay, uh, no, P, S. Okay, and then we'll put the star here. So you can see in it will pull either in the in the in the in the abstract. Okay, so this abstract contains psychology. So it contains psychometric and all those variations that you can get. So for instance, you can, you, if you go here, it says display option, then you, you go to format. It says abstract. So when you click on abstract, it will open the abstract form to, uh, for you to view. Okay, it will, it will give you the abstract form. So if you if you if you look inside, you might find some of the words that are related to. Uh, so you can see here, you can see neuropsychiatry. Here you can also see something. Uh, you can see something here, psychedelic drug. Okay, so this is the idea. The wildcard asterisk will only give you the variations of the combinations to the first uh, word that you, you wrote. So take note of this. This is very important so that you can get the variations of the words that is being used. So for instance, if I'm interested in, let's say, um, I'm interested in um, some words that are in psychology or are in PSYCH, like psychiatry, which is my, which is what I want, 
then it's going to give me psycho, uh, psychiatry, psychology, psychoanalysis, all things that are in, uh, in the field of uh, maybe um, psychology, okay? Now, let's look at another interesting one, search field. So search, this search field is very important, okay? In the sense that um, it gives the, 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 the person who is searching an idea about what to search. So for instance, if you see AU, it means author. If you see TI, it is title. TIAB meaning search the title at the same time, the abstract. So if you don't put anything in the search, like the one we did just now, we didn't put this, uh, these tags. So it's use title and abstract. And then TW means text word. So any word that you put there, it, will, it is going to search the whole content of the paper and then bring out the results. So let's quickly look at this, okay? Let's quickly look at it. So um, for instance, for instance, I want to uh, search, maybe I say Lugar Brown. Then I put AU there. So it will search all the papers that I have written and all the papers that I belong to, okay? So I have searched with what? The author's name. So it is also important because <clears throat> sometimes we want to search for, uh, we've read certain papers and then we've seen uh, the leading you know, voice in that field. So we'd want to find out what actually, what are the papers that the person is, uh, is, 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 is uh, what are the ideas that the person is bringing out? And also, for instance, if you are looking for a professor, those people who are in uh, master's and want to do PhD, this is how you search <clears throat> your, your professor's um, 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 research area. You put your professor's name here and then put AU and then to search your professors, the name, through the name, to search all the research that your professors have done, your professor have done, especially the recent ones. Then you will know that this is the area that this person is, is, is into. Then you can opt to work with that person. So this is how I do to search for um, prominent researchers and then researchers in the, in the area that I am, uh, I am doing my work. Now, this is um, <clears throat> how it looks like in PubMed. So PubMed, we have the tags, we have the the we have the the boolean, and then we have the wildcard. Now let's go to web of science. Okay, so we we still have some time. So is there any question, or we'll finish then? We'll we'll give the question. Moderator. Um, Doc. Uh, I think due to time, maybe if you can finish. Um, maybe, yeah, finish and then we come in okay. with the questions. Uh, okay. Because uh, if nothing at all, I think we have to start with Akusia's question. So I think you should just finish up and then we just have the question time. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So let's go to, uh, so now let's go to Web of Science. So I told you that the tags and all those things, they are similar, but there is a small variation in this uh, in, in, in the various uh, databases that we have. Now let's go to, I'm going to log into my, um, okay. So let's look at Web of Science. Can you see it clearly? Okay. All right, so. So Web of Science contains the these Boolean operators too. Can you hear me, moderator? Yes, sir. Don't we, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. 
All right, so you can see it also has and or not, but it has included more near and same, near and same. Then in the truncations and then the wildcard, uh, it has added four, uh, three to it. You, you remember this um, asterisk. And then it has added the question mark, the dollar sign, and then the quotation. Then also it has, it also has the search field tags. A U C F S U T S. We shall look at that in more detail. So we are not going to look at the and or or not because they are almost the same. Let's go straight to what uh, the near means. So um, if you look at the near, the near says that to find records containing all terms within a certain number. So. For if you look at the, the, the title or the, the abstract, it will count the words. So within three words, if I find this word, the search word, then I can pull it out. Then the same means that such things that must occur within the same sentence, within the same sentence. So let's look at how it's, 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 it's done. Okay, so let's look at near. Let's look at near. So for instance, I'm looking for, so when I write, uh, let's say stress, okay? And then I write near, okay? And I put the number three here. What it means that it should go through the, uh, the records containing the terms within three numbers. It should contain within three positions. So let's, and then we are searching in topic, okay? So let's see how it's, 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 it behaves. So near, near sleep, near sleep. So what does it mean? Three, it will set for stress that has, three steps to sleep, three steps to sleep. So let's search. Okay, let me. Okay, so I'm talking about, so we have about 5,552 um, results. So we are searching for uh, words that have that uh, stress. So stress should, um, should be within three steps of what sleep. So let's look at this. So, Look at this one critically. Look at it. We have stress here, right? So one, two, three, three steps. Let's look at this one also. Stress, one, two, three steps. Let's look at this one too. Sleep, one, so sleep has one, one, two, uh, and so here we have one, two, three, three with the total here. Let's look at another one also. Three words within three words, okay, within three words. So we have stress, okay? This is where the stress is, but it has within three, we have one, two, three. So sleep deprivation AD, chronic, then stress. Let's look at another one. Okay, stress management. So it is with, if you look at stress and then sleep, it is within three steps of what? Of sleep. So if it is more than three, then it will not show. It will not show. Now let's go back, okay, and type four. Let's go back and type four. 
So remember, we let me see. We had let me see the number. We had five thousand five hundred and fifty-two, right? So let's go back and then search for within, let's say, five steps. Five steps. So within five steps, we have 7,610. 7,610. So we have stress, okay? So we can see the first one also belongs to this. So we can see the first one when we did three, when we did three, it was, uh, we had these results because it is within three. But now that we said it should be within five, it will also contain those words within three and then within five. Okay, this is very interesting in searching, very interesting. If you look at this one too, it, it, it was within the, the, the number of times to, to stress, okay? And, and so on and so forth. So if you know how you do the searching, if you know how you do the searching, you will, for instance, I am looking for uh, topics, but in the topic, if the word is too far away, then I think that it is not them. It is not important for that research. It's just a word that they use in the in the abstract or in the in the in the heading of the of the research paper. So if I narrow it, it means, for instance, I say network security, network security, but maybe it is network security. It is within network and then security. But how about if the security is maybe somewhere far away in the in the letter, maybe network computation, blah blah blah, to provide security. Okay. So if you if you if you if you if you search with that long one, it might not be so narrow to what you are looking for. So you have to be careful in using these kinds of um, uh, these kinds of um, Boolean functions. Now let's go to the next one. The next one is called same, same, okay, same. Now, what does same do? Same is saying that such terms that must occur within the same sentence, within same sentence, so be careful, within same sentence, it means that the, 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 the words that you are using or the terms you are using should be within the same sentence, okay? So for instance, we are saying, uh something like uh addiction okay then i write same okay then i say al alcohol okay and okay something like this and i search so you can see that in the, let's open the, so we can see some alcohol use addiction. Okay, so alcohol addiction. Also, if you search through, if you go through the abstract, you will see it, it will be clear. So here in here, it says in the, in the, in the, in the title, alcohol, then, so we have alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. So that means that the sentence you used, okay, the sentence you used in the searching, the sentence you used in the searching, you should, it should be in the same, um, uh, the, the words should be in the same sentence that you are, the term should be in the same sentence that you use for the search. Okay. Now, these are the only variation that we have in, in, in that is so different from PubMed. Now let's look at, we, we have looked at the asterisk sign. We have looked at the asterisk sign, but asterisk sign is the same in PubMed. So let's look at other ones. So for instance, we, uh, we have quotation, 
quotation. Now, quotation is used when you want the search to be in the same order. Now, if, for instance, I type uh, substance use disorder, and I don't put this order, and I don't put anything, I don't put any of the Boolean here, it will use and, it will automatically use and. So what I should do now is that I can put a quotation here. That means that I want it to be in this same order. It should be in this same order, not, not any other. So let's do the search and see. So you can see substance use disorder. Substance use disorder. Okay. So it means that it is going to take all those words that are in the same order. So it is it's like you are putting emphasis on the order of your search. Okay. So it is not going to say substance and use this order. No, it's not going to say substance use and this order. No, it is going to be substance use this order. This one means that you are focusing on this word. It is a, an important word for you to use in your search. Then we have um, some interesting characters too. For instance, if I type, if I type, Wu, and then I put, uh, I put, let's say, question mark sign, and I put N. So what is this one doing? This one is saying that I'm going to look for all the words, okay, that may have a, a certain number to this, this word, okay? So what word, what word can replace this? Uh, question mark. So when I click on search, it will search for all the words that contains variations of W, M. So here it has replaced it with E. Okay, here to E. Maybe in some other ones, if you put it with A, maybe woman or something like that. Uh -huh. So this one is just replacing a certain character, especially if you are not sure uh, the spelling of the technical word, you can use this technique to search your, to do your search. Now, um, then there is another one, okay, that is the, um, so let's go back to our PPT. So we have this one, so it says, uh, the question mark will retrieve, so you can see, woman includes women and woman, okay? And then the dollar sign also, sometimes it will replace with zero character. So here, it means that, for instance, if I have, if I type disease and I put a uh, dollar sign here, it will include all those words. It looks like when you are using the, uh, the asterisks, but this time around, this the 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 difference between the asterisk and then the the dollar sign is that it will if if you put you can see disease one d here disease and then one s so diseases, but the the asterisk sign will give you the whole variation, the whole variation of how things are spelled. But this one is just single character. There's a single character, okay? A single character, like disease, diseased, and all that. But it will not give you a long variation of what disease is, okay? And this one too, we we'll touch on it. Now let's go to the next one. So this next one is what we have seen before. AU is uh, author and then, so for instance, another thing that you should look at is that, um, so suppose that you have, you want to search for the um, maybe publication in UESDC, okay? Publications in UESDC. This is what you do in advanced searching, okay? This is what you do in advanced searching. So we have, you can see OG means organization. 
OG means organization. And in, in, in Web of Science, um, I want to show you, okay, TS means topic. TS means topic. So let's go straight to uh, this one and then see how that search is done. So suppose that we want to search papers in um, uh, USTC, only USTC, okay? Only USTC. So what you do is that you put OG, meaning organization, equals to, let's say, I want to put University of Electronic Science and Technology. Okay. Then the next thing is that I want to combine it with um, a Boolean and it will search only the topic. Okay. Search only the topic. So, what topic? Maybe I want to search uh, maybe network okay network and uh, yeah maybe network maybe net network security let me put use this one network security net work security so what is this one doing is saying that search all papers Okay, search the titles or topics of all papers belonging to university, uh, uh, university of electronic science and technology of China. Okay, of China. So let's hit on search. Uh, it says there is invalid query. Where is it? Mm. Okay, here. Oh, okay, it's searching the topic. So let's just remove this part and then write network. Okay. Let me check, maybe the end there is,
E. Okay, I think there is some error somewhere. But um, what this one is doing is, it's supposed to, well, when I find the error, I'll, I'll come back to it. But what I'm trying to say is that for these kinds of searches, it's all it can search within the the organization that you are looking for. Like for instance, the uh, when you use OG means that it should search uh, through the organization and then um, topic. Okay, so for instance, maybe if I let me check this one and see if it's correct. Okay, it says it's wrong. Okay. Maybe we'll come back to this later. Maybe I'm typing the wrong thing. But um, what it does here is to, um, to show you that you, if you can use organization, you can use uh, search with um, publication name. You can use any of them to do the searching. Actually, actually, it, you, you, you may not need to um, to write the the whole thing in the search, okay? You may not need to write the whole thing in the search. You can maybe search something like, uh, uh, maybe something like this one, uh, something like this, okay? And then you can come down here, okay? Instead of writing it, you can come down here and go to, um, so in, instead of writing, you can actually use your, you can use this one to do this, the searching. So you can see here, the sources title, you can see languages, um, uh, corporation or groups that the author belongs to, you know, and all that you can use this one to limit your search instead of typing okay if you are having errors like the way i'm having the error you can do this one okay and then use it to do your search okay so you can actually limit your search within the uh, within uestc and then it will bring you all the all the variations of all the researches that have been done in uestc so later on uh, i'll find out the error and then post it to you later so that we can move on. Okay. So this is this is this is it. Now we can also use. Um, so for instance, as I search like this, you can do a search within a search, search within a search. So if you if you click, let's say, um, I I I select this two. So when you select this two, it's the default is most relevant. It will arrange it in as most relevant. Then here, you can see, you can find the information here, what to do here. And also you can export, export. So when you click on export, it will give you how to export this, uh, the, the, select, the, the papers you have selected. So you can select print so that it will give you a PDF of all that all the all the titles and then the abstract. Or you can put it in your EndNote. EndNote. If you have an EndNote, you can put it in the EndNote so that you can. It will be easy for you to do referencing. Okay. So for instance, if I click on uh, print, if I click on print, you can see here. It will ask me how. What do I want? Do I want to print? author, title, source, and abstract in the same page. If yes, then I, I, can, I can pick it, okay? And then it will give me, uh, for instance, let me, let me just do an example. So it will look like this. It will look like this. 
Yeah. So it will give you all the abstracts, okay, all the information because I said it should give me uh, um, the author's name, the inform every information that is linked to the paper, it should give me. Okay. Now this this is one way of doing it. Now the next one is that the next one is we have some few minutes, but um, bear with me because of the hiccups. Let's let's give me some minutes to finish it up. Now the next one is uh, Scopus. Scopus also have this same um, thing, but Scopus has a wide range of of studies. Scopus have a, a wide range of studies. For instance, if I say uh, if I put addiction and uh, uh, neural imaging. And then I click, so here you can see it's, it's asking me, it's asking me uh, which, which it's going to, it, should it search within all these three? So remember, it will search article title, it will search abstract, and it will search keywords. So if, you're, if the study contains a keyword like addiction and neuroimaging, it should, it should bring it out. You can also select it them here. Okay, you can also select them here. So when, when I click on this one, it gives me about 2000 studies. Now, it, just like in the, in, the, in the web of science and then PubMed, you can also do your, your, your filtering here. So this is called filtering. You can filter it here. And then you can even set um, what you want from here. Should it be the source from addiction biology? That is the, uh, the, the, the publication or the journals, okay? Then when you select, let's say, I select, so here it says that we have abstract and then related uh, study. So when I click on this one and click on this one, and then I say, I should, I have a Mendeley so I can view in Mendeley or I can export the selection in, um, in, in Scopus and make it as a CSV, make it as a CSV. So uh, for instance, I can share with you, let me, so you can see if I click on this one, Downloads. So you can see, it's also exported it in CSV. So you can actually look at the CSV form, okay? And then the, the various, the two papers that I have, have downloaded, it will give you all the information and then the abstract you can see here, talks about prenatal marijuana, blah, blah, blah. So this is how you can save in uh, Scopus. 
which is very, I like scopus when I want to, uh, I want to do, um, put all the papers uh, into like Excel form. So normally I'll go to Scopus and then download these papers. And now in Scopus too, you can download the, the original papers. You can download the original papers. Okay, so you can, for instance, if I go to this one, I, I, I have download here. When I click on download, it will, so for instance, if uh, for this one, you have to get an extension, it will download it for you. For instance, I have a, a Mozilla. I'm not using Mozilla right now, but if you use Mozilla, it will download the PDF for you, which is very easy. Okay, so this is how um, these three databases work. This is how these three databases work. Now, <clears throat> we can, after this one, we know that we have, um, the common things that we have is they have the Boolean function, they have wildcards, they have truncation, they have uh, tags, and then they have filtering. So this, this, um, this way of analysis will give you a very huge and narrow, you know, it will narrow your search. And then after narrowing your search, it will give you an overview of what the importance of the literature that you have extracted. Okay, so because if you don't do this, you download, so you can see when we search, we have about 2 million articles. You cannot read through the 2 million articles, but if you do the narrowing, if you do the optimization, you might get even just 30, 30 studies, okay, which is enough for you to get your results. <laughs> okay, now let's go um, to another section. So the next section here, okay. The next section is how to use the um, PubMed to how to use programming R to search on PubMed. How to use pro programming R to search on PubMed. So let's go to this uh, this page. So we have this. So first of all, what you need to do, okay, what you need to do is that you need to install the PubMed. Uh, <clears throat> so if you, if you, <clears throat> if you are, <clears throat> sorry, if you are convers um, conversant with R, R programming, normally you should install, install, package yes you can see install the package then <clears throat> the package to use is easy pubmed easy pubmed easy pubmed i have downloaded it already so normally you when you download it you load you load it into memory now let's assume let's assume that i want to do some small searching okay some small searching so I first run this, okay, into memory. And then I say Nooks, um, Nooks uh, query. So I'm going to query PubMed, just like we did on the, on the website, query PubMed. So I'm going to query PubMed of this, uh, um, this author. So I run it, okay. Now, when you run it, it will it it will put the 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 query in memory. Now you can use this, okay? You can use this one to get the IDs of the ID means that the title, blah blah blah, everything concerning this person's um, search will be put into memory. Then you can see now, um, I have extracted it. Now I want to view the abstract. I want to view the abstract. So if you want to view the abstract, this one says fetch data, fetch data from uh, Nooks because I have put this information, okay, into the query of Nooks. So 
I run it, it will take just a minute. And then when I print it out, you see, when I print it out, it gives me all the study that I have done, including my, um, uh, my abstracts, my titles, everything, okay? And you can actually save this one. You can actually save this one. Now, the next thing is that, so for instance, and I want to, uh, I want to extract all studies, okay? I want to download all studies that contains addiction, but I should check their title. Do you remember TI, meaning title? So it should be addiction title or substance use disorder in title. And I will give the dates, okay? So this part is the filtering the one that we did uh, on, on, on the other side. So you can put the filtering here. So PDAT meaning date. So from, uh, from 2010 to 2020, it should, abstract, it should abstract all papers that have a title like addiction or substance use disorder. So I can run this one, okay? And then, uh, I can also, um, so first, first of all, you need to, you need to uh, find a way to put all your results in, in a directory. So I can change my directory to, let's say, um, I create a directory and, okay, I have notes here. Okay, let me create a directory. It's a directory. Let's say, let's say, uh, uh, note demo. Demo. So I have a directory called Nukes demo. So I have set the directory. If you are conversant with um, MATLAB and others, you know how to set the directory. So I run this and then I say download these addiction papers or substance use papers within 2020, uh, 2010 and 2020. And I want about, let's say for our time. So let's say just uh, three, three studies. Okay. And then name, name the studies in, as what addiction. Okay. So I can run this download. Okay, run this download. It doesn't take any time. Okay. So it means that whatever we have done on the, the site, whatever we have done on the site, we can do the same thing. We can do the same thing on, you can see it's downloading. Okay, so currently for addiction papers, we have 2,940, 40, papers, but I'm saying you should download only three of them, download only three of them, containing substance use disorder or addiction, okay? Okay. It will take a while, but I will show you the, it doesn't take a while, but I will show you the, the so let me go to my desktop go to Nukes demo. So you can see Nukes demo, it is uh, extracting the data, extracting the data. So I can open this data, okay. When you open the data, it will be in a form of XML. It will be in a form of XML, but you can see, now you can see here it's abstract. It gives this part of it is the abstract. And it will give me the, all those information that we, we can get from the website. But this one gives you more information because you are doing the query by yourself. Okay. So it will download all the papers that you want and put them into a file like that for you as a TXT or XML. Then using the XML, you can transform the XML into, um, into maybe Excel so that it can be clear for you to read, 
okay, and then download the papers. So this is how to do your search. This is how to do your search. And um, um, I think time is up and um, I will wait for some other questions uh, apart from the one that Ifwan Nanjim asked. Okay, so this is the end of the practical section. I hope I did not run so fast because uh, I was afraid that we may lose time. So, hello. Yeah, hello. go. Very wonderful yeah. presentation. Yeah. Thank you. This, this is an amazing presentation. Very, very amazing, power packed. Uh, yeah. For me, I enjoyed every bit of it. I don't know about others, but I've enjoyed every bit of it, especially the last part. Uh, using the <laughs> I've enjoyed every bit of it. So let's, without wasting much time, um, for the sake of time, um, at most five um, questions. Yeah, yeah, know. please, um, please, help one engine. I beg you, can kindly send uh, this thing again. Sorry. The question. Um, the question. Doc, I think I have the question, so let me just read it to uh -huh. you. Uh -huh. No, you can post, post it, then I can see. Post it. Okay. If, uh, Akoshia Nanjin, please, if you are online, kindly post your question again. But while we wait for her to post the question again, um, someone can also ask a question. Please, at most five yeah. people. So um, raise your hand or chat, put your question in the chat box and Doc will do justice to it. Akoshia Nanjin, please, I see you online. So repost your question, please. Doc is on standby to answer your question. Thank you. Yeah. And if you have a question to just raise your hand, please, and um, or mute and then ask your question. If not, you can also post in the chat, um, chat page and then Doc will see your question and he will answer. Trust me, you are, you are supposed to have questions because this is a power packed uh, yeah. um, session. So you, yeah. you can't say you don't have questions. <laughs> <laughs> so please keep your questions coming, okay? Keep your questions coming. For me, I, I'm still digesting the whole thing. So I'll ask my question in a, in a bit. But keep yeah. your questions coming. Um, so while we wait for um, the questions, I would like so, to... Yeah. yeah, yeah, go ahead. Hello? Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So while we wait for um, the questions, I would like to um, welcome Honorable Benjamin Baffo. Yeah, on you are welcome, Honorable. Oh, I just saw him here. Honorable Benjamin Baffo. All protocol observe, please. Good evening, please. Thank oh, you so you're much. You're welcome, sir. Good evening. You are welcome. So thank I you. just Dr. Hugo Brown, thank you so much. Yes. If I may just say something very little, please. Yes, I please. Think you have the floor. What you are sharing, to be honest with you, I'm really happy you're doing this. I have wow. very, very honest with you. The reason mm -hmm. is this that one of the best way to be a very great scholar is to know just the foundation. The skills that will make you efficient and effective, right? Yeah. Because there are thousands and thousands of information out there. Now, when you are using the tools, mm. that helps you to, I would say, streamline, align, and then be focused on what you're doing to get the right things you're looking for to work on. So I think systematic review and what you're doing right now, to be honest with you, that's one thing I've learned, is one of the essential things a master or a doctor, or even a bachelor student should really have before yeah. he or she leaves academia. So thank yeah. you so much for what you're doing. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you too, sir, for your, for your um, encouraging words. Thank you very much. Um, please, if you have a question, hey, Akosia Nanjin. No, if you have Akosia Nanjin's uh, question, you can ask, you can post it. Okay. 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 Let me just forward the question to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's a general question for all of us. So. Okay, so I just posted it from Akosia Nanjin. It says, so suppose just... you wrote master thesis and wish to continue in that same area. Is it mandatory to still do a literature review publication before jumping into it? Yes, 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 and yes. You know, imagine that um, I think per the metric, per the metric in 2020, you are saying that 
every, especially in, in computer science or computer engineering, every week about, about uh, 50 to 100 studies are being published. So imagine that during the time you are writing your thesis, you, you read certain things and then based on that, you got your questions and then your solutions and use it to write your thesis. Remember, from that time to the time you get your, your PhD, many things might have gone on. So you have, to, you have to be on top of the game. That means you have to make sure that at the time that you are going to do your research, what new thing has been added, okay? Or what are the things that you overlooked? What are, what are or were the things that you overlooked during your master time? It happens that during master's time, maybe sometimes because you want to graduate so quickly, you find something and then you write your thesis. Maybe you didn't go through the literature extensively. So at this time, this is the second chance for you to really know what is going on and then produce a meaningful result. So yes, yes, you need, you need to do a review before you jump into the technical publication. Thank you. Thank you very thank you very much, Doc. So if you are, um Akosia Nanjing, I hope your question has been answered. Hey, my people, you don't want to ask questions. Oh maybe, you are perfectly yeah, okay. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did a, maybe I did a very good job. So people are okay. Yeah, actually you did. <laughs> you did you did you did a perfect job in two in two hours and ten minutes. You did great, Doc. But I, I still believe that a very a, every good student have a question, no matter how good the lecture is. So I try. Maybe <laughs> my people are still digesting it. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I, I I believe my people are still are, are just um, digesting it. So while we wait for the question, let me still continue with my shout out journey. Um, Nat, Nat, how are you doing? I see you, bro. <laughs> so I see, I see you here. Nat, hope you are good. Okay, I think he's he's not available at the moment. Okay. Yeah. So I think that uh, maybe in future, if someone wants to ask more details, the person can just put a, a question in the email, send it to me. Um, I'll surely have the time to uh, to 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 answer such a person. You know, sure, um, Doc. Sure, sure. Because uh, for, mm. for for the searching and doing literature review, I think that you, even during my PhD time, I had a tough time because sometimes I look for papers. Even now, even now, you know, maybe I'm sloppy in searching. You know, I don't want to follow the rules in searching, so I end up having just a scanty. Um, information or I don't have the information at all. So it is very important. This is this is an important, an important portion of your um, your scientific or your uh, research life. Sure. So you should take notes of it. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. those who are programming by us, those who are programming by us, you know, I intentionally brought the R part or the programming part so that I can satisfy those. Uh, Programming by us people, you know, they they are always complaining. I don't do anything for them, so I, I brought this <laughs> one. <to find them. laughs> mm. <laughs> Just to whet their appetite. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so um, Doc, I hope um, the slides will be made available, and yes. and so um, I hope the executives will make the video also available after here, so that um members can have access to that so I, I i think maybe people are really taking yes, time yes, please. the slides and the video they are very very important <laughs> okay mr Baba, no problem no problem no problem they'll be made available um so please uh we i'm giving uh three more minutes as grace period for anyone who wants to ask a question before we end this this session please three more minutes anyone who wants to ask a question concerning what Doc has done? You can either put it in the chat box or you, you can just um, use the hand raiser, then you raise your hand and then we call you to ask your question. 
or you can add any related any related question yes uh, yes please don't leave it. It, it we are treating something um, important i believe it includes every aspect of um, research life so you can ask you can just raise your hand and then you ask you ask your question maybe you are okay with literature review but you are struggling with the next step after literature review i believe mm -hmm. doc can help um, yeah. um you answer those questions so please feel free raise your hand or put it in the chat box and we will do justice to that so just three minutes okay then we we bring the the, the curtains down on our series of academic seminar. So in that regard, I would like to say that this has been um, a three part series um, on themed academic um, roadmap to academic success. And we started since uh, I think uh, December or is it January, I guess. And today is the last part. So you should, there should be some questions bugging, bugging you or something like that. So Doc is here to answer that question for you. So kindly raise your hand or put it in a chat box. Thank you. Okay, I think people are either sleeping or, <laughs> or like I said, they are digesting. They are digesting the, okay, I'm going to call names and ask. <laughs> okay, Edwin, Edwin, how are you doing? Mr. Edwin. Hello. Yeah, hello yes, sir. Yes, so do you have any mm -hmm. questions? Yes, how are you um, doing? I'm doing great. Currently, um, I don't have any questions. I'm even practicing what you taught. Um, hey, serious students. Because... Oh. Wow. Um, I want to add something to it. Hmm. Um, just as the Bible says, right? You know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Um, hmm. I'm not bothered to use this kind of coding um, to search for literature review. So hmm. um, I will, I'm will. i practicing so that I won't forget. So um, Mr. Brown, thank you very much. It's, Please, he's Doc. Thank you. Yeah. Dr. Brown, thank you very much. Oh, very oh don't worry. You can, you can call me. <laughs> wants um, me to go there, so I don't want to look old. <laughs> dog, dog. Okay, Eddie, I'm so glad you are practicing. Wow. Hey, then it's yeah. that's what people are doing background, though. I think so. I think so. I think that a lot of them are doing yeah, the okay. practice. Yes, dog. There is a question for you in the chat box from Abena. How different is the completion session different from the completion session of the paper? Um, Sorry, I meant uh, discussion, the discussion and the conclusion. How different is it? Okay, okay, okay. So the discussion um, part and then a conclusion part. Okay. So um, in my experience, um, the discussion part is telling a story about what you have done. So for instance, you run experiments or you have done a survey and um, you, you have used several techniques to get your results. Now the, the part that you need to tell people what it means or how can we relate the results that you are having to real life issue or how can we relate it to systems that are existing? That is where you do your discussion. However, in the conclusion, in the conclusion, the conclusion is supposed to contain your um, final thoughts. So for instance, your final thoughts should be based on your results, but the discussion may contain several other people's results. So for instance, you said, in my, in my work, I found A, B, C, and, and D. And I think that uh, some years ago, this person did this, this, and that. So I think it's consistent or it is it's it's resonates with other people's results. And however, mine is more than that, 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 that. Then when it comes to the conclusion part, you say, okay, I used this, this to achieve these results. And therefore, I think that or it, my results suggest that it is more powerful than the existing system. So 
Basically, conclusion is just concentrating on your results, but a discussion is the relationship that your results is having with other people's work or the existing system. Did I answer the question? Very well, thank you so much. Okay. okay. So I think our time is up and fast spent. So uh, I would like to call on, Doc, thank you so much. I would like to call on Honorable um, Christine to do us the honors by giving us the vote of thanks. Honorable Christine, please, if you are here, can you please uh, take over? Honorable Christine, our dearest FC. Hello, Honorable Christine. Okay, I think Honorable Christine is not available. Um, Honorable Brown, please, if you are here, can you please do us the honest by giving us the vote of thanks, please? Honorable Brown. Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, please, on behalf of, okay. On behalf of um, Nux Chendu executives, we want to say a very big thank you to Dr. Kluger Brown for making time to enlighten us about this subject. A lot of us really needed this and we are grateful for everything that you've done. We're also grateful for everyone who made time to also join us so that we all learn. And we say a very big thank you to, to our academic team for, for helping us to come out with this wonderful program. We say, Aiko, thank you so much for your support and your help throughout the entire period. We say a big, we say, a, a, have a good night, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Brown. So um, without much ado, I would like to call on uh, Mr. Baba for the closing prayer. Mr. Baba, please, if you are here, kindly take over. Hello, Mr. Baba. Hello, Honorable Baba. Uh, I see him here, but he's, uh, I think he's not available because he's still muted. Hello, Honorable Baba. Okay, so, okay, Edwin. Edwin, I'm back again. <laughs> Honorable Edwin. Hello. Oh, yes, boss. Please, please, can you just end the program for us with a word of prayer? Thank you. Okay. Um, shall we close our eyes? Mm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for um, giving us this day and also granting us the strength to meet together to, um, to share knowledge. Father Lord, we bless the life of um our leader who spent his time to teach us father lord we replenish all his strength and continue to grant him wisdom we bless your name for making this meeting happen father lord as we are living here um for our various rooms we pray and seek for um wisdom and strength and um, so that at the end the next day when we wake up and the previous days, we also wake up. We give glory to your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. And um, thank you, everyone who made it here today. Thank you, Doc. A very, very big thank you to you, Doc, and to the executives. Thank you. So I believe today we've really learned very, very, very important things about literature re review, and it's going to guide us throughout our entire research journey. Uh, it's my prayer that you don't forget about these important basic things so that once you, you get used to them, um, research will no longer be anything scary for, for us. So do have a pleasant evening and have a very 
good and sound sleep. Good night. Bye. So, on up.